Whew, after this, we only have six games left in the timeline. Now, if you forgot where we last left off, we left off in the era of Simon's grandson, Juste Belmont, in Castlevania Harmony of Dissonance. Now, we're re-entering some familiar territory because of tonight's game, Castlevania Rondo of Blood. the show. Hello everyone and welcome to a brand new installment of my revisit to the Castlevania timeline. Tonight's game is Castlevania Rondo of Blood. Rondo of Blood, known in Japan as Akumazo Dracula X, Chino Rondo, roughly translating into English, Demon Castle Dracula X Reincarnation of Blood is a 2D action platforming game originally released in Japan for the PC Engine in October of 1993. People outside of Japan had to wait until 2007 when Rondo of Blood was re-released for the PlayStation Portable under Castlevania The Dracula X Chronicles. Now Rondo also got ported to the Wii Virtual Console in March of 2008 PlayStation 4 via Castlevania Requiem in October of 2018, on the same day Castlevania Season 2 came out on Netflix, and its latest re-release was on the TurboGrafx-16 Mini in May of 2020. Now, as I said in my Harmony of Dissonance re-review, I'll be using Castlevania Requiem. So, here's the question. Is Rondo of Blood any good? And is it one I could recommend to you? Let's find out. So the story takes place in 1792, and the Belmont of the century is Richter Belmont. The plot is quite simple, actually. Stop Dracula, as well as save the maidens that Dracula and his dark priest Shaft kidnap. This includes Tara and Iris, but also Annette who is Richter's fiance, as well as Maria Renard. We go through stage after stage and boss after boss, including a boss rush, before we fight Shaft and get to Dracula. And assuming you were to play the Dracula X Chronicles version, if you rescued all the girls, Dracula has a third form, and HOLY SHIT HE'S TOUGH! I can take out the first two forms with little to no damage, but god damn this third form is honestly tough! But, we beat Dracula, and the castle crumbles, ending Rondo of Blood. <laughs> So, that was the story of Rondo of Blood. Overall, it's actually pretty good. The stakes are quite high given that Dracula went as far as to kidnap the lover of our main hero, as well as having more deadly forces to deal with. But with the story finished, let's move on to gameplay. Gameplay of Rondo is your standard Castlevania game, quite literally in this case. As you can see, Richter cannot control his jump in midair, as well as no multi-directional whipping like in Super Castlevania 4. But new to Richter's moveset are the item crashes, where if we press a certain button, Richter unleashes a super attack at the cost of a certain amount of parts. Hydro Storm, the item crash you can use with the holy water, is honestly pretty great since it covers the entire screen. Rare Cross is also pretty okay, though it moves in a wave-like pattern, so it's not that reliable compared to Hydro Storm. We can also play as Maria Renard after rescuing her. Now, I know what most of you are saying. Played as a 12-year-old girl in a pink dress compared to the greatness that is Richter Belma. And allow me to say, fuck you, Maria is awesome. She moves twice as fast as Richter. She can attack twice as fast as Richter, as well as move and jump at the same time. Has a double jump and her animal sub weapons can fuck shit up. She's honestly really great for newbies, but she is what I consider a glass cannon, much like Alfred in Bloodstained Curse of the Moon. So overall, the gameplay is pretty damn great. 
Sure, some omissions were made to Richter, but the gameplay is still good. Visually, this looks absolutely amazing. The environments look fantastic as well as enemies along with Richter and Maria themselves. No wonder Richter's sprite in this game was reused for Castlevania Dracula X on the Super Nintendo, because this looks absolutely good! But now, I know what most people are waiting for me to gush about, the soundtrack. I mean, come on, it's a fucking Castlevania game, of course I'm going to gush about the soundtrack. We have remixes of older tracks, such as Vampire Killer and Bloody Tear, but this is the game where another great song was born. Divine Bloodlines. Even in the SNES game Castlevania Dracula X, this song kicks so much ass! I just love this OST in, in this game in general. This is honest to god amazing! Now, let's recap. The story is pretty good, gameplay is also pretty good, it, visually it's really amazing, and OST is simply headbanging inducing, it's that great. So here are my closing thoughts. Overall, Rondo of Blood is really amazing. Despite some step backwards in the gameplay department, the gameplay more than makes up for it by introducing the item crashes, playable Maria Renard, as well as a fucking boppin' OST. Seriously everyone, listen to this soundtrack. This is honestly one of the best OSTs in the entire franchise. If you have to try and play Rondo of Blood, much like what I said in my Final Fantasy 1 review, Get the PPSSPP emulator and emulate this game. Or, if you have a PS Vita, Dracula X Chronicles is also available there. Overall, Castlevania Rondo of Blood gets my score of... A perfect 10 out of 10. Even with Richter basically being like his NES ancestors, I still say this is a really fun Castlevania game. But now... I want to know from you all, did you play Rondo of Blood? If so, what version did you play, and could you recommend it to a friend? Leave your answers and more down in the comments. Give this video a like if you enjoyed it, and while you're here, consider subscribing and turn on the bell to be notified whenever I make a new video. As always, the social media links are down below. And join me next time where I take a look at the big one. The one most fans, and even non-fans, are familiar with. Castlevania Symphony of the Night. Till then. Take care.